popular YouTube hypertrophy series today about the usefulness of supersets. They do have a bro reputation, meaning that a lot of people don't fully understand the capacities and potential that they open for programming. So you see, the beauty of supersets is that they give you the power to make the training much more compact. Why? Because they are going to exist within periods of time where before there was nothing. Periods of time where before you would be resting, for example. Thing is, I have found through my years of experience that when people are resting, most likely they should be walking instead. You do not need to rest all the time. Taking three minute rests after doing some curls is completely idiotic. It's a waste of your precious time. So what you want to do is superset. And this is why, in my opinion, supersets should be seen first and foremost as a way to bridge volume gaps. A lot of people like to use them as a way to manipulate intensity, for example, pyramid sets, drop sets. All of these people call supersets, and it's fine because a superset really is a set in which several exercises follow each other without a break. But you also understand that this definition expands to a lot of things. So today we're going to focus on that quality in particular. Why exactly do they bridge the gap in volume? Well, because as I said, they replace void by tonnage. They put something where there was before void. So what you want to do is you want to consider supersets as a way to attack another part of the body and eventually catch up on that part, meaning that usually what you're going to be doing if you employ that strategy is you're going to use it for a body part that is lagging. And the beauty of it, most of the time for people who have body parts that are lagging, it's because there are very small muscle groups or muscle groups that usually get big through isolation and these people are lazy on these exercises. And the issue when that happens is you accumulated so much of what I would call tonnage depth that you now have to catch up on it and because those muscles are so weak for you to catch up it's going to take you years and years and years and it's going to be very frustrating because these muscles are so behind that even once they have a pretty decent size and strength they'll still look fairly puny compared to the rest of your body so how do you create a chance for you to catch up without injuring yourself or overworking. You abuse them through frequency and volume with what is going to be a low intensity set that repeats itself a lot. And where is the best position for you to put that in your program? As a superset, right? So I often say on this channel, the only thing that you should not be supersetting is strength work, which is what opens the training because you want to focus 100% of your energy but for the rest, anything that follows the strength work, supersets can go anywhere. My program personally is only supersets. And some of them, you could even call them giant sets because I have five exercises in a row. It goes from two to five exercises. This allows me to accumulate massive amounts of tonnage throughout the year without damaging my recovery, without getting potentially injured and Overall, when it comes to overall body development, this is the best way to approach it. Because if you were to dedicate strength work or specific set and schemes to every single body part and then slap variations on top of that and then slap a lifting rotation on top of that, you understand that your training program would be the thickness of the Bible. You cannot let that happen. So what you're going to do, you're going to look at certain exercises that have no cardiovascular cost, they don't take any time to set up, and they're not really damaging on the tendons, and you're going to superset them all the time. So the best body parts to do that with are going to be calves, the, the medial and lateral head of the triceps, um, the biceps, you can also do that with the traps, you can do that with the rear delts, you can do that to some extent with the abs, but you also understand that there are certain groups that you need to pay attention to when you employ that strategy because if they have a connection with the rest of the body, meaning that within compound movements, they're going to be recruited and potentially be 
very critical in maintaining structural integrity and not going to mechanical failure. These shouldn't be superset, meaning what? Meaning that if you superset abs, you're going to damage the, the strength of your core because you're recruiting the muscles of the abdominal muscles, right? If you have a compound movement that requires a lot of uh, rigidity in that area and that, that lift follows right afterwards, you might have created an issue for you here. You might have made that lift weaker by default. So that's what you need to pay attention to when you use supersets as a way to bridge volume gaps. You also need to pay attention to one thing that a lot of people uh, fall into when it comes to mi mistakes that are easy to make. And I will make a video dedicated to that in particular, but when you just start working a muscle group, especially a muscle group that has never been isolated before, it's going to be weak and it's going to be easily tired, meaning that not only can you not move a lot of uh, weight with it in isolation, but they are going, it's going to burn out within two or three sets. So you really need to give that muscle some time and it can be frustrating. Why? Well, because you're trying to pay off that tonnage depth as soon as possible. So you're trying to do as much as possible, but the problem and the philosophical crux of that, that potential issue that you're creating is that in natural bodybuilding, if you messed up and you didn't do something, common sense dictates that you're not going to be able to make up for it very quickly. You're going to have to pay the toll. You're going to have to pay the price for it. And the price is name is patience. So you're going to have to start very slow. For example, if you do your calves and you never train your calves, you're going to find that you need to do very slowly at first because they're going to tire. And then you're uh, actually standing your feet, your ankles are going to hurt. So you slowly build up their ability to endure the weight and then you go full on. That is the natural evolution of supersets. And the beauty of that is it's very easy to program. Why? Well, when you start, you can just say, okay, I'm going to add two isolation exercises, two sets for that program. So that on that day for that set, two supersets. All right. And then move on three, four. And when you max out that set and there's no, there's no space left for a superset, well, maybe now we can touch set number three. All right. And then maybe you can look at the entire program and say, okay, maybe I can also do that on this day and this day. The issue with that is you do not want to do too much of it. At some point, the frequency is going to be maxed out as well. And this is when you start adding weight. This is when you start with the progression, but I wouldn't advise you to just stay with the same number of sets for the supersets and add weight there because you're not really building up a volume capacity and a work capacity, you're turning that into strength work and you will not be able to pay off your tonnage depth with just that. So you need to have the patience to stay with the same weight, stay with the same movement for a while, the same reps, and just create a frequency that is going to cover the entire week. And once you're there, it's going to be much easier for you to pick which days you would rather do something like strength work and which days you're going to do volume work. And that is for me, one of the many applications of supersets that define and are sort of opposed to the view that many people have of them because they are usually considered to be a bro thing when in reality they are an excellent tool for people who want to learn how to program and who want to progress naturally for a long time. Thank you for watching. Any questions about supersets, please put them in the comments. I will make other videos about them in the hypertrophy series. Have a great day.